For threading the serger, you're going to notice that I'm going to use colors on each of the different upper looper and lower looper and the needles so we can see what we're actually doing. I'm going to pull this all the way up to the highest position and then you'll notice that the threads just need to come up and over this. But on the front of your threading guide, right down on the inside of your machine, you're going to notice that there is a number one next to the upper looper. So we're going to thread actually the upper looper, the lower looper, and then needle, needle. So we can, this is your left needle, this is your right needle. So all you have to do is bring your thread up and over the back side, and then underneath this little area, that is the first guide on the back side. Now, we also have the presser foot in the up position. So by putting your presser foot up, that means these tension discs actually open up. And that's a big benefit on the Bernina L450 serger. So if you have a serger and you're watching this video and you don't have the feature where the tension discs open, what you want to do is just make sure that as you hold these threads, pull down so the thread goes in this. Now, even if you're using this serger with the presser foot up, you do want to make sure that your thread gets seated all the way as far down as possible. You might hold it back here back here and then pull down that way you can really feel the thread getting where it needs to be so once the foot gets lowered the stitches are or the tensions are going to adjust not adjust the tensions are going to grip the thread properly that is a very common problem people don't get the threads deep enough into those tension discs so I mean, I'm going to use the tweezers here so as we go you're going to notice that all the guides are nice and open so the blue ones here and there are a few guides guides that you need to make sure that you are catching. So if you ever miss a guide, that is going to probably affect the way the stitch actually is forming. And then the upper looper is the one that goes above the foot. Now this little eye at the end of the upper looper right here, it's actually quite large. So that's where our decorative threads will often go. So that is all that we have to do for the upper looper. Next we're going to do the lower looper and that's the red one. So we always are going to do it in these orders. Uh, you're going to uh, hear me talk about that as we do any um, re-threading, that we always need to think about how the serger was originally threaded the first time. So if anything gets out of order, we almost need to back up and put it back in. The upper looper first, the lower looper second, then the needles go in last, or I should say the needle threads. So right here, this is the one that people sometimes have a little trouble, but at least on this serger, there's what's called a lower looper threader. So I've done this guide, this guide, this guide. They share with the blue one, and I come to this point. Now, we are going to take this white button and push down. On a lower looper of a serger, with all sergers, there is a place at the very back, I almost call it like a, his elbow way back here, that needs to be threaded. You're gonna find yourself, by pushing down that little white button, it exposes, one little extra guide. And all you have to do is take your tweezers and put it around that guide. And then take the white button and slip it all the way up. And it takes the thread to the very back where it needs to go. That is the hardest part of a serger. And look, we're already through it. So let's go ahead and we'll just thread the lower looper. Notice that I just kind of laid the, the two looper threads even over the presser foot. So they can go there, they can go to the back here, they can go underneath the presser foot, whatever works for you. They'll all get into that chain once we get going. Now we're gonna do the needles, same thing. We're gonna follow the spool up to the guide at the top of the thread holder, back behind the machine, just like normal. And then this time, we're going to come underneath the serger, follow the green path. This is going to be the right needle. And then we're going to do a guide right at the top of the needle itself. Okay, there's kind of one on the left, one on the right. And at this point, I'm going to just go ahead and use my needle threader, and then we'll do a video to help you see it much, much closer. But you can see that just by pushing it down, it produces a little loop that I can just pull right on through. So once you master your needle threader, that is a, well, that's a time saver. If you have a needle threader on your sewing machine that might not be working as well, 
then that's not a bad thing to have like more than one of these. Now, I lowered the presser foot when I went to put that thread through the needle. So I'm noticing that as I'm trying to put this down here, it's very tight. So I'm gonna relift my presser foot up. I can feel immediately those tension discs open back up and allow me to really make sure that thread gets all the way down into the tension discs. And then we'll just go ahead and thread that, good. Okay, one more time with the needle threader. And I love this little tool. And watch, once I'm done using it, I'm gonna go ahead and put it right back into the little place right here. And then I will have it for later when I need it. Okay, so here is just a little note about getting started. I'm gonna go ahead and close that door. And by the way, if for any reason you don't close that door, um, well, you really just wanna make sure you always close that door. Okay. So here we go. We don't have that chain going just yet. So what you will see me do throughout our videos is you'll see me folding fabric in half because most of the time we do so on two layers and I'm always gonna serge on the fold side. The fold side is gonna allow me to stitch and then be able to open it and make sure that the seam is looking good. Now this is just my thing. I, I tend to have my students, especially when I have a class of 12 sergers, all about ready to start off. Let's see how everybody threaded their sergers. I'll have them like lift up their presser foot, slide the fabric in and even just if they want, they could even take the first couple stitches by hand so things don't just race away without them getting perfectly in position because that first stitch went into fabric instead of just running it into air, which is usually fine, but when I do a class, that's how I have them do it. Now these little threads, I'm gonna just trim them so they're not so long and we'll just get that first line of stitching all the way through, see how things are looking here. Now you have two ways to cut off this tail. Gently run it out the back side. There's a thread cutter on this back corner of the serger, but oftentimes just because of habit, you'll see me run it right underneath the knife and then cut it off. Now there is a little loop of thread right here. You will find that once you do another seam, that loop will kind of just work its way to the back. So don't try to um, pull that out. You can just leave it. It's all good. So let me see. Ah, this is where I started. I, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fresh run from top to bottom and really just make sure my serger is set up the way I like it to. Ah, she sounds beautiful. And now we can take a look at what we're looking for for a perfect looking stitch. So on the top side, the first thing we threaded was the blue upper looper. That's the one that goes back and forth here. We have on the back side, the second color we threaded is the red. The red lower looper goes back and forth on the back. They kind of meet right along the edge and I can see that they kind of, the little links are perfect. And then we can see that we have two rows of stitching. One is the orange, which I use in conjunction to my yellow, and then the green here. So those two little stitches right next to each other look like sewing machine stitches. On the back side, you don't see them much. So you see like little dots and that little dot indicates the, the stitch. But here is the proof. When you open it up, you wanna have a nice closed stitched seam. And I do see that. Now, if I pull really hard, I do see my orange. So that would mean that if I needed to match my fabric, maybe I have um, some fuchsia fabric, I could put one spool, a small spool in my needle, uh, my outside needle, which would be my left needle. And then when I pulled that open, if I pulled on it, I would see a matching thread, not just whatever threads that I have. Now we will talk about what threads do you need to actually purchase for really having the most efficient use for your serger. Uh, but this definitely is a place to start. We can see we, we like our tensions, but if for any reason your tensions don't look as perfect as mine, check out the next videos where we go into kind of doing some troubleshooting to get the perfect seam no matter what fabric you're working on.